if a manly spitfire was to go into a bar and meet a little old girl at RVA and they was to get messed up with a football bat and end up back at the Spitfire department and one thing led to another, if you know what I mean, and they had a youngin, there it is. What's up everybody, I'm Adam, you're watching Model Aviator, and this is the E-Flight Commander MPD 1.4 meter. Before we get into this, I have to give a special shout out to the gentleman that provided the airplane for review, Scott Elmore. Scott received this airplane for his birthday and was nice enough to drop it off in the box on our doorstep literally the next day after his birthday so that we could uh, put it together, set it up, fly it, and review it for all of you. So Scott, thank you buddy. The E-Flight Commander has been around for a while. When the original came out several years ago, I remember thinking how gorgeous that airplane was. It was red and white. This is an updated version, and what is updated, by the way, is the original was a three-cell ship. This is capable of flying on three-cell or four-cell, so it has a lot more power. has all new smart technology. It's got an Avian ESC, and it has brand spanking new higher torque Metal Gear servos, which should be able to handle whatever you want to put this airplane through. Now, the MPD in the name of the airplane is a shout out to the two designers. David Payne designed the airframe and Mirko, I'm going to try this, Pecorari. Hopefully I didn't butcher his name. He is the founder, an Italian gentleman of a company called Aircraft Studio Design. And this is what he does. He designs paint schemes for airplanes. He designed the paint scheme for this. So when you take a look at the gorgeous lines that David came up with for the aircraft, and you take a look at the beautiful paint scheme that Mirko put on this airplane, it is a winning combination. I remember thinking when the original one came out, it looked like a cross between something vans, one of the RVs, RV4, RV8, and a Spitfire. And those are two very good looking airplanes. I don't know if that's what David was thinking about or if those were influences. Not sure, but that's what it looked like to me and that's okay. I love the way this airplane looks. Now, when I started pulling the parts out of the box, I did notice two things that disturbed me a little bit. The first thing that I noticed, and this is just kind of a personal thing, but that pilot's kind of creepy looking. I, I don't know. I just I think they could have done better than that. I I just don't like that guy. I don't know what it is. The other thing is the wheel pants. When I pulled the gear out, and you can see here in these pictures, the wheel pants are kind of a hybrid mix. The inner part of the wheel pant is plastic, the part that attaches to the gear. The outer part is foam. Now I'm going to assume that it's EPO. I don't know. It could be EPP, EPS. I don't know. I'm going to assume that it's EPO, but even if it is the toughest of foam, it's not going to be as tough as just a plastic wheel pan. And plastic wheel pants are put on a lot of airplanes. And I can tell you the way this airplane slows down, this big gorgeous elliptical wing could handle the few extra grams of just those wheel pants just being plastic and they'd be a lot tougher. Depending upon what you're taking off of, these, the foam part of these wheel pants might not fare so well, so I wasn't too happy about that. I just thought they just should have put plastic wheel pants on it. But other than that, everything else that I pulled out of the box, I really liked. Obviously, it's gorgeous. Every piece was in very good condition. It's very, very well packed. And from there, we got to the assembly, which was interesting. So when I say that the assembly was interesting, to be fair, it was interesting, but not hard. The manual is very, very well done. Every screw goes exactly where they say that it goes. There's only a handful of screws for the wing and the horizontal and the gear. It's really not a hard airplane to put together. I would say a beginner, which I don't think this is a trainer necessarily, but a beginner that's never put a foamy together could follow these instructions. 
and probably get this airplane together and somebody that's built at least one or two foamies already could definitely assemble this with no problem. Now, the snag that I hit, I don't think, I'm not certain, I don't think that this is something with every one of these airplanes, but it was something that happened with mine, or at least Scott's, I should say, the one that we're reviewing. When we went to put the wings on, the interesting thing about these wings, they're the very, very convenient style we've seen from Horizon Hobby before, where everything plugs in. When you put the wing on, it plugs the electronics in for you. There's no wires to mess with. It couldn't be simpler. Well, I got one wing on, went to put the other wing on. I got it right up to the point where everything connects and the wing finally goes on that final half an inch. Couldn't get the wing to go on. I started thinking maybe that stuff's not lining up right. Took a really good look at it, it was lining up right. So, we took a look at the wing tube. Now check this out. This is a picture of our left wing with the wing tube as far in it as we can put it and I made a little sharpie mark that you can see clearly there, a little silver sharpie mark to mark how far the wing tube went in. Now check out the next picture. That's the right wing. Put that same tube in where I marked it, same end, and as you can see it's about a half an inch off from going in as far on the right wing as it did on the left. So obviously there is something plugging up that right wing tube channel. Now when these airplanes are molded, obviously the wing channels are already there. I don't know if foam seeped in there or adhesive. I'm not sure what happened, but something was plugging up that right wing tube channel by about a half an inch. So I had to cut the wing tube about a half an inch off to be able to get the airplane together. Now that's not going to affect the rigidity of the airplane, losing one half an inch on one side won't affect anything. The airplane will handle all the G's for the lifetime of it that it would if it had that half inch there. It's not a big deal, but that's what happened with the plane we assembled, so we had to tell you about it. All right, we got her together. We stared at her and decided that she's absolutely gorgeous. Now it's time to fly. So here's the flight footage. You're gonna see a little bit of the maiden flight, the meat and potatoes, you'll see the takeoff and the landing, the first first two. You'll see the stall test, which is kind of interesting. Check that out. And then you'll see a little bit of bonus footage along with one full flight where I'm just kind of flying it, kind of like a sport plane, kind of show you what it'll do out of the box with the throws available to you just with radio programming and maybe making a couple of mechanical changes. I've got a little more elevator in this one than you normally would. That's one thing that I definitely have to say is check our setup out. We're going to show you the setup page before the flying. That's a fairly aggressive setup. You can certainly tone this airplane down and we'll talk about that and how well this thing flies and give you our final thoughts after the flight footage. So we'll see you back here after the flying. Check it out. Mechanical adjustment was required to get that much elevator throw, but it had no adverse effect on the way the AS3X corrected. Here's our maiden flight takeoff. We needed some down trim, but as it turns out, I didn't have the elevator completely centered to start with. Now here I'm going to do the inverted flight test. This is to check the balance of the plane. I'm putting in right now what I feel is the right amount of down elevator to maintain the level flight inverted. And now I'm going to double check it with a 45 degree inverted upline test. So you'll see here, when I get it to 45 degrees, I am now off the stick, and you see it starts to slowly move towards the canopy, and now I just pull it through, but that slow movement towards the canopy tells me that the airplane is balanced the way I want it to be. That's pretty neutral. And now this is our first stall test. 
and you see it'll drop a wing to the right slightly. I got a little overzealous correcting for that. Now I'm going to test it coming back the other way. Does the same thing, not too drastic. And now we're doing it dirty with the flaps down. And I'm at full back elevator, power off, and it's just setting a rate of descent. It won't drop a wing with the flaps down. I found that really interesting. And now this is our maiden landing. So we had our maiden flight and I spent the next flight playing around with the commander and this is my third flight with it. The Commander is one of those really good, honest airframes that you find yourself getting used to really, really quickly. At this point, I'm already super comfortable with it. It has a very wide flight envelope. And as you can see here, with full flaps, this thing slows down really, really well. I've flown some high-wing bush-style sport planes that you can't fly any slower than that. That's pretty impressive. The commander feels very locked in in pretty much any position at any speed to me. I was very impressed with the fact that this is the second E-Flight airplane I've flown recently where I felt like the AS-3X was really tuned well. A lot of times in the past they had the gains set way too high, almost as if they were trying to make the airplane flyable in a 20 mile an hour wind or something. And that might have worked in a 20 mile an hour wind, but in normal flying, there were so many things that you'd do, and the AS3X would show itself to be there. I like the fact that they're tuning these airplanes now so that it works in the background and you don't know it's there. They've got the gains low enough 
to allow the airframe to just be that airframe and they're refining it instead of trying to dominate it with the gyro and I really like that. This is a great example of the flat envelope. Nice, slow, controlled turning. And now we'll show off that new 4S power. What a fun airplane to fly. I just can't help myself. I had to give a one-wheeler a go. Got just a little bit of bonus footage for you. My buddy Martin from across the pond always appreciates when we show that an airplane can take off and land from grass, even if it's this barely covered dirt we have at this field. But anyway, here you go, buddy.
And we put this in just because this was the best knife edge of the day. Believe it or not, this was the second flight. Pretty sweet. Man, I always say this. I know I've said it on camera before, but the flying really does speak volumes. It is important to note how comfortable that I got with that airplane in such a short time. I mean, you just see, I think I flew this airplane four times total. That's all the stick time I've got on it. That sport flight that you saw was either my second or third flight. I can't remember for sure. It is a really amazing flying airplane. Easy to assemble. Like we said before, the snag with the wing tube channel, I think that is the exception, not the rule. Is this a beginner's airplane when it comes to assembly and flying? I don't think it is. I absolutely think it would make a good second airplane. Once you build a foamy, assembling this is going to be no trouble for you. And once you master something like an apprentice or some other trainer, this would make an excellent airplane to check three boxes. It's going to teach you to deal with flaps. It's going to teach you how to handle a tail dragger. And you can learn a lot about aerobatics with this airplane. It's a wonderful plane. As you saw with our setup, our setup is a bit more aggressive. You can dial that way down and really make this airplane a lot more docile than the way we flew it. But it's just so capable. It's so gorgeous. I can't say enough about it. It is rare that I really dig a sport plane that isn't a high wing. Um, I'm kind of a bush plane kind of guy. I like sport planes. I'm not going to name any, but there's a lot of them out there. Those typically tend to be my favorites. I would have one of these just as much as I would have any of those, those other high wing airplanes. So that's really saying a lot. I'm impressed with the looks. I'm impressed with the performance. Very well thought out. I love the improvements. I think you will too. We're going to put a link in the description to the page at Horizon Hobby where you can get one of these bad boys. So if you decide that there's a commander in your future, go get yourself one. I don't think you'll be sorry. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week with something really cool with wings. Or maybe even two wings. Who knows?